Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series and the topic of ray optics. Check your understanding nine. This is a very interesting problem wherein you could see on the right side of the screen that uh, picture given in the problem consists of four points, three of them on the vertices of equilateral triangle and fourth one is the centroid. He's, he's talking about four uh, points being important in terms of two being sources and two being images. And you're supposed to do this two part problem wherein you have to find the position of the lens, assuming obviously paraxial rays and also the focal length. Okay, so it's a interesting, an old Olympiad problem, but definitely a JE advanced concept embedded in it. Okay, so here we go with the formal wording of the question. All right, uh, I would suggest you to pause the video here, make sure that you try this question for five to 10 minutes and do come back for the concept and then the complete solution explanation with all the cases covered. Okay, so here we go two point sources of light at a distance of 24 centimeters apart are placed near a converging lens in the plane containing the optical axis of the lens and a diameter of the lens. In the given figure, the locations of the sources and their images are shown by four dots. Three dots are on the vertices of the equilateral triangle and fourth dot is on the centroid of this triangle. So he never mentions which of these are objects and which of these are images. It could be any of the possible situations. So for the condition given, what is the focal length of the lens? One thing that was not mentioned in this question, but it is quite obvious in any competitive paper-based examination is that you are supposed to assume that paraxial approximation. Okay, so with that understanding, let's start with the concept number one that is needed to crack this question, which is a very basic school level concept that we learn for any convex or a converging lens is that if you have an object and its image is formed, assuming paraxial approximation, that the line joining any point of the object to that corresponding image will be a straight line only if that passes through the optical center. Any other ray will always get deviated. So the undeviated straight line always passes through the optical center. So the line joining the object and image points pass through the optical center, the line joining. Okay, so it should be a straight line. So this is one concept that we'll use in locating the lens. Okay, so next concept number two for an object point in 2F plane, okay? So if F is the focus, then 2F is the, uh, the position where you would end up having a special property. So let's call the plane perpendicular to that uh, principal axis or optical axis as he calls it um, as the 2F plane. And in that, if I have an object, there's a speciality. So the concept one where you end up having the ray undeviated produces an image at this particular position. Okay, right. So, and using one by V minus one by U is equal to one by F, you realize that an object at two F produces an image at two F of the same size. So we can make a statement that dropping a perpendicular from an object and image point. So ima imagine A is the object point and you drop a perpendicular and A prime is the image point and drop a perpendicular onto principal axis. The distances that you'll end up having along the principal axis, along the principal axis is always the same. Only for this 2F point, okay? Not for every other situation. Please understand the U's and V's that we use in the formula of one by V minus one by U are always measured along the principal axis and not OA and OA prime. So you realize that if this particular triangles are actually congruent, then OA and OA prime are also equal to each other. So the distance from optical center along principal axis, if it is equal, then distance of that point from the principal axis along that direction is also equal. Okay, so that would only happen for a 2F point. Okay, so these are the two concepts we utilized and then move on to the problem uh, situation. Okay, so a lot of things on the board. So just follow my lead. Don't try to read things on your own. I'll take you step by step holding your hand. Okay, so case one is where I'm assuming because in the problem actually never mentions which are uh, the objects and which are the images. So I, in case one, consider the one of the objects is at the centroid, okay? And the rest of the things will cat, uh, take care of themselves in terms of symmetry. Whereas in case two on the right, just follow, uh, the centroid is one of the images. I'm assuming whether that case is 
possible or not we'll discuss okay so let's come back to case one in which one of the ob uh, objects is at the centroid okay so i have represented object points as o1 and o2 and image points as i1 and i2 okay so uh, like what i said in the previous uh, situation if i were to join the object and image with a line which is this side o1's image is i1 let's suppose this is that line and o2's image is i2 then this is the line both of them undeviated rays should pass to the optical center okay which i am considering it as the point p so this point p which is the intersection of this o2 i2 and o1 i1 should be the position of the lens okay so or the optical center we don't know what's the principal axis please understand but the optical center has been located as this particular point same thing can be done here also in case 2 where O1, I1 joined and O2, I2 joined. So if this diagram was right, then optical center should be here in case two. Okay, so come back to case one again. I2, if this, this diagram was true, then you could see O2, I2 combination, the object and image lie on the same side of the uh, point P. And that is only possible if the uh, I2 is the virtual image and it is on the same side. And it's also far away from the point P which is a possible situation in case of a convex lens. If an object is placed much closer for a converging lens than the focus itself, you end up producing a virtual image, which is farther than the object. Okay, so this is a possible case. Whereas when you try to justify the same situation in case two, you end up getting a absurd situation. You could see if I1 is a virtual image of P because they're on the same side of P. If I1 is the virtual image of O1 in P, then I1 seems to be closer. Okay, so that is not allowed because in case of a convex lens, a virtual image produced of a real object obviously should be, right? Because the rays are going to slightly converge and they produce an image farther than the object in case of virtual image. So that's how we justify that the case two is an absurd situation. So case two is not allowed. So our job now is to solve the problem by enlarging this case one diagram, okay? So I hope till this point, locating this particular P is done and only one case is possible where object, one of the object is at the centroid. Okay, so I'll now enlarge this diagram in the next slide to solve the problem further. Okay, so let's move forward slowly. Oh, lot of things on the board, left, right and center. So again, I'll take you through very carefully. Let me explain the diagram first. Okay, you could see the same diagram that I justified the case one with, I have drawn with extra things, okay. Location of P, I think I have already explained. So line joining O2 and I2 and line joining O1 and I1 intersect at the uh, optical center. Now we don't know what's the direction of principal axis. I've drawn an arbitrary green color line. Can you see that I'm considering as the principal axis of that particular lens. Okay, now how do you measure the uh, positions of the object and image? And also what are the values of V and U that you substitute in the standard formula? What's the standard formula? One by V minus one by U is equal to one by F. Okay, so let's start with on the left top can you carefully observe i am now looking at o1 and i1's analysis okay object one and image one let's see where they are o1 is here i1 is here okay do you see them equidistant from p do you see p is a midpoint of this side so this distance is equal to this distance do you remember the concept two that will only happen for a 2f plane point that means o1 and i1 are in the 2f plane that doesn't mean this distance is 2f. Don't, uh, don't think that this distance is 2f. 2f is that distance which is measured along the principal axis. So let's assume that the principal axis makes an angle theta with this side of the triangle. So do you see I marked a theta which is unknown to me right now. So if this distance is 12 root 3, how do you know that? Remember in the question he said the two objects are two sources of light are placed at a distance of 24. So if this distance is 24, you definitely know that the entire median is 36. So this is 24, this is 12. I think you can get the equilateral triangle sides. Okay, so you'll all accept that this is 12 root three. Okay, a simple geometry, school level one. So I didn't want to increase the length of the solution. That's why I took the liberty of writing these values that you can always derive, okay? So with this distance as 12 root three, please understand, dropping a perpendicular onto the principal axis, this would be the 2F point. So from P to this 2F with this 12 root three and this theta, 
this distance is 12 root 3 cos theta. So that's what the equation I have written. 12 root 3 cos theta is 2f. Our job was to find f. Remember, theta is also unknown. So you need one more information, one more equation in f and theta. And that's where we'll look at slightly more complicated case of O2 and I2. O1 and I1 were special points. That's why I went there first. Okay. So from O2 and I2, which is virtual image, remember we discussed that O2 and I2 are on the same side of the principal axis. Okay. So same logic from O2 onto this green color principal axis, drop perpendiculars. Okay. Call them as object O and drop the perpendicular from I2 and call it as some I. So this OP distance is the u value and this ip distance is the v value please remember that you always substitute the distances along principal axis in this famous formula so what are these so if this is theta this is 90 minus theta and if this is 12 i think you'll all agree this is 12 sine theta okay so that's what i have written op is 12 sine theta simultaneously if this is 36 this entire big thing is 36 sine theta so using the proper sign convention right uh, with v and u both on the same side both being negative i substituted those numbers here okay so value of f comes out to be 18 sine theta so these are the two equations in f and theta that i have to solve for solving them pretty easily i think you'll all do sine square plus cos square you'll get theta is 30 degrees and therefore the focal length of the lens is nine centimeters which matches with the uh, key given in the book okay theta being 30 degrees some of you would have doubts whether this particular situation should be taken as paraxial or not okay so there is no other way of solving such a problem in olympiad situations yes there will be some distortion of images when angle is this large but that is how the exam actually asks the question so slight ambiguity is there with theta being 30 degrees but i think you have theoretically solved the problem okay so i hope uh, you enjoyed the problem up till here. So this is another practice problem from the same book, a slightly easier one, but a very important concept, again, based on the ray diagram and the important properties you need to understand for JE mains and advanced. Okay. So try this one out, build up your understanding 21. I'll try to give the solution if required in the Pathfinder solution series. Okay. And also you may check other interesting ray optics challenges from this particular channel. Link of these I have made it into different subtopics and placed it in the description below. So these are not just from Pathfinder. These are from very good sources across entire uh, uh, different levels of exams and books that I have compiled till now in this channel. Okay. So please do enjoy them. And in case you've already done that, you can also uh, go through the rest of the series that I keep running in this particular channel one after another right so um, uh, all the links of these playlists of different series names themselves can explain things okay resolve series is the one where uh, i generally answer the toppers doubts which are gen not usually covered in the textbooks okay so that will be one little fun that you can have if you are new to this particular channel okay so please do like share and subscribe to the channel in case you like the content and before subscribing i request you to watch two or three videos and uh, uh, try to understand the quality of the content that goes into this particular videos and you will definitely be uh, very much interested to subscribe okay so that kind of confidence i do leave take a leave from you and see you in the next video